Hello tech world, this is Tech Thoughts. In this video, I'll be converting a physical server to a Hyper-V VM. As always, if you prefer written tech info, the corresponding article for this video can be found on the Tech Thoughts blog by clicking here or by referencing the comments below. I'm just going to need one prerequisite if you would like to follow along in this particular video, and that's going to be the disk to VHD utility, which you can get off of TechNet by clicking the download link right here. I've gone ahead and downloaded that already, and it's currently sitting on my physical server. So what I have here is a server running on a super micro 2TU twin 2. And I like to get this server off of this physical chassis and into a Hyper-V VM. I picked kind of a daunting setup here to demo for you to show you what the disk to VHD tool is capable of doing. So we'll go ahead and fire up ISC real quick. And we'll just do a quick get windows feature to show you what's going on with the server using get windows feature where the install is equal to true. And we'll just select the display name, which will show us all the roles that the server is currently running. So we can see that this isn't your average run of the mill server. We've got uh, obviously it's a domain controller with Active Directory and domain services running here. Also a DNS server, also a file server, also a webhead. Uh, it's doing a couple other things too. We've also got, uh, it's running WSUS and Windows deployment services. So this is kind of a complicated uh, server we've got here to demo. And in a production environment, it's generally not a good idea to P to V your domain controllers because you can always just spin up another one and sync it. Uh, but this is just a demonstration to show you that it is technically possible using the disk to vh tool. So let's go ahead and get started. So we'll need to open the disk to vh tool, and you can do that simply by opening the folder you downloaded it to and running the disk to vh to utility. And what that's going to do is it's going to scan uh, the current physical server that you're on, and it's going to highlight all of the disks that it finds associated with that server. And what's going to happen here is I just need to specify a location of where I want to send that. That could be local to this device if I want to like USB transfer it over. Uh, but instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to send this over to a, a share location that I have in my hypervisor. So I'll send it to the hype v0. And it's just important to make sure that you actually have uh, access from this physical box to that server. So let's go ahead and do a quick check. And I do have access to that location. So it's going to send all of these uh, drives as independent VHDX files, since I have this use VHDX up here, uh, over to that uh, hypervisor location. Once over there, I'll be able to create a VM and go ahead and spin it up, and we'll be demoing that shortly. Uh, for right now, you just need to select the drives that you want to convert to VHDX and click to create. It really doesn't get any easier than that. I am going to go ahead and convert all of these because, as you can see here, uh, my actual Active Directory domain data is stored on the S drive. I definitely need that. Uh, images uh, are stored here on the I drive uh, for WDS deployments. I've got all my WSUS patches on the D drive, so I want all of this to come over to my new VM. Uh, so I will be converting all of these at once. So I'm going to go ahead and click create. And because this is a little bit of data, especially that WSUS drive, uh, it's going to take just a moment and I'll go ahead and speed up the video so we can skip past the, uh, the process. All right, with that completed, you'll find your new VHDXs in the location that you specified. And since I put those over onto my hype share, I'll come over here in my temp transfer folder, which is where I specified to send it, and notice that I only have one VHDX. Now, a moment ago, I explained that it would create a separate VHDX for every single drive that I identified. I did this on purpose to highlight one of the limitations of disk to VHD. So we'll go ahead and open up a disk management real fast on this physical server. And note that on this particular circumstance, that all of the drives are actually part of one physical drive. And these are just different volumes that have been partitioned out. This to VHD will consolidate all of those different partitions into one single VHDX file. It will only create separate VHDX files for separate independent disks. And since this was all part of the same disk, we only get one VHD file. So that's something to be aware of as you move forward for your P2V migrations. Okay, so let's hop over to the hypervisor real fast. And now that we have this VHDX over here, what I can do is I can open up vert management. So I'll go ahead and open up the Hyper-V manager. And what we can do now is we can create a new VM and attach that VHD file we just created. So I'll right click on the hypervisor, click new and virtual machine. Ideally, what we would like to do here is set up the VM to be as closely resembling the, uh, the physical host as possible. We'll be marking this as generation one. I've had some mixed results uh, choosing generation two with the disk to VHD utility. Uh, it really depends on the hardware that you're bringing it over from. But in this case, I'll be choosing generation one. So we'll come back to my original physical domain controller, 
and we'll see that it originally had 12 gigs of RAM and two quad core processors. So just for the initial startup, we'll keep that as close as possible to being the same. All right, so we'll give that 12 gigs. And what I recommend here with the network is at the first onset of starting up your new VM, we're gonna leave that uh, connection as not connected. The reason being is because we still have the domain controller is still running as a physical server. And we don't want any kind of conflict to occur as we fire up this VM for the first time, just to make sure that everything is working properly and to do some initial testing uh, before bringing that in, in production. So I'll choose use an existing virtual disk since we already created that. And I'll go to the location that I created that, which was on my D drive in the temp transfer folder. This can always be moved at a later time and click open and next. So this is ready to go ahead and create the virtual machine and I'll click finish. All right, so the first thing I'll do is I'll come into settings and I'll give this a couple more virtual processors to kind of mirror what it had when it was a physical device and click apply. And we're now ready to start this newly created VM. So I'll click connect and start. And after a few short moments, that VM will go ahead and start up. And we'll be able to log in using the same credentials that we would for our normal domain controller and log in. So Windows considers it as a improper shutdown. And we'll just say disk to VHD conversion process. Click OK. Now you just need to do some initial testing to make sure that everything is operating as expected. So all our drives are here, including our domain data and WSS data, as well as our images. And I'm also going to take a look inside Device Manager to make sure that there's nothing left over from the original physical server. So no question marks or anything of that nature. One thing I do want to do is just check to make sure there's no ghost non-present devices. So I'll open up a run command. As administrator. And I'll type in set device manager to show non-present devices. And I'll set that to true. So we'll go ahead and reopen device manager. Click View and Show Hidden Devices. I want to make sure that there's nothing left in here that we feel is going to cause some problems. For example, these ghost NICs. I'm going to go ahead and uninstall those. And we can see here that some of the old drives that I had associated with the physical server are still present. I'm going to go ahead and remove those as well. Pretty much anything that you see here with the uh, grayed out icon can go ahead and be removed. So just browse through some of the uh, items here to see if you find any devices that are no longer part of the new virtual system and are leftover or holdovers from the physical device. All right, once everything has been removed to your satisfaction and you've performed any additional testing on this particular VM uh, to satisfy your internal requirements, you can go ahead and shut this VM down. On this new system, I don't need quite the uh, hardware that I did before, so I'm gonna take this down to two processors, as well as two gigs of RAM, and I'm gonna enable dynamic. Starting is going to be 1024. Max RAM is going to be 2048. And apply. And we're now ready to shut off the original physical server. 
because as we bring up this new one and configure IP information, it will create a conflict. Okay, now that that's shut down, I'll go ahead and start this one up. Okay, so now I need to associate the network adapter with one of the virtual switches, so I'll give it the public V switch. And I'll tag it for any virtual LAN identification as appropriate for my environment. Click Apply. If we come back into the VM, we just need to now give this IP information as appropriate, and we'll be ready to utilize this server in production. I hope you found this video on P2V migration using the disk to VHD utility helpful. And don't forget to check out the corresponding article on techthoughts.info.